When we call out to the Almighty for our needs, usually we call out for the needs of this world and we at times forget to call out for the needs of the hereafter. Let's remember that the greatest crisis that a man can actually face is that on the Day of Judgment. If we pass that, we've passed everything. If we fail that, we've failed everything. So it's important when we supplicate and when we call out to the Almighty, we actually call out not just for this worldly need, but for the hereafter and for Savior from hellfire. And this is why when the Almighty speaks about those who go on the pilgrimage or for the Hajj, He actually says there are some who supplicate and they are only asking about worldly things. What portion will they have from the hereafter? But he says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ They are from among them those who, co- who call out to the Almighty saying, O oh Allah, grant us, or O oh our Lord, grant us goodness in this world as well as goodness in the hereafter and save us from the hellfire or the punishment of hellfire. Allah says, those are the ones who will have a portion of what they have earned. And this is something very, very interesting because we tend to forget that the crises of this world are nothing compared to the crisis of the hereafter. Simple reason, that one is everlasting. This one is not going to last long. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding and the ability to be able to call out to him in the correct way. You know, if we take a look at the prophets of Allah, they were loved by Allah more than us. They were chosen by Allah more than us ordinary people. And if you look at their lives, they went through challenge after challenge. They went through so much. We would have called it crisis after crisis. But there was a point when even the messengers called out to Allah to say, when is your help coming? Sometimes in our lives, we find one difficulty followed by another, then a third and a fourth, and it starts raining difficulties and hardship such that we begin to think, where is the Almighty and why is He not helping us? Those who know, those who believe would actually know that, you know, the even the messengers of Allah went through a lot of difficulty with their own companions. They faced hardship and they too said when is the help of Allah going to come and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 214 of surah al-baqarah ala inna nasrallahi qareeb behold the help of Allah is very near very near when you are getting to the point that we would perhaps term the boiling point when you're getting to the point where you feel you're almost broken, Allah says, well, if you have faith in me, I want you to know my help is very near. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. It's challenging, but we've said in the past we were created in order to be tested. We will be tested one after the other, and we must ensure that we have pleased the Almighty in whatever way we can. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you're spending, spend from that which the Almighty has given you. We've seen in past episodes that one of the ways of achieving comfort in crisis is to spend to share, to reach out to others. So the question is, who should I reach out to first? Obviously those who are most in need. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ مَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ When you are going to spend, make sure that you spend on your parents. You spend on your relatives, you spend on the orphans, you spend on the poor, those in need, and the wayfarer, the one who is stranded. So make sure that you spend on these people. Take care of your elderly parents. Your parents took care of you when you were young. It's about time you took care of them. 
even with the differences you may have, and it's normal to begin to have differences as you grow older with those who are even older, perhaps a generation gap, perhaps whatever other reason. But remember, be patient, be calm, only say respectful words and spend on them. Make sure that they are okay. When they reach the age where they cannot work anymore, they cannot earn anymore, they should not have to worry about life. We should be spending on them. May Allah grant us. Remember when you spend on others, the Almighty has to give you because in order to get it to them, you are the one who's undertaken to give it to them. So he will give it to you first. And this is why he says, then look around you, your family members, your brothers, your sisters, those who are related to you, your uncles and aunts, nephews and nieces, and the circle goes broader. Take care of them. Anyone from among them struggling, reach out to them and look at the comfort Allah will give you when you are in difficulty and hardship. Then you look for those who are orphans and the widows and look after them for the sake of the Almighty. Look after them because they've lost a parent or they've lost their father. They've lost a breadwinner. Look after the poor. Look after the needy, those who are stranded, the strangers who've come to your town, those who are passing by. You don't know them. They don't know you. But all you know is that they are stranded. The Almighty says, look after them. And then you see how the Almighty will bless you. That is amazing. This teaches us that when we reach out to others, the Almighty reaches out to us. And we must make sure that we look after our family members, our relatives, our communities, our countrymen, etc., members of the Ummah, before we make the circle larger. But if there is someone in greater need, look after the one who is the most desperate first. These are just lessons that the Almighty has delivered to us, and He's asking us to be good and kind in order to achieve that goodness and kindness from the Almighty. He says, whatever good you do, he definitely knows about it. That's verse number 215 of Surah Al-Baqarah. If you look at the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something amazing. You know, sometimes we desperately want something. We think it's good for us. We really feel we would like it. And Allah knows that it is not good for you. So Allah says, sometimes you dislike something and he knows it's better for you. And sometimes you love something and he knows it's not good for you. So he keeps you towards that which is always beneficial. He has your back, basically. So it's amazing how Allah says in verse number 216, Sometimes you don't like something. It's better for you. So sometimes you like something. And it's not good for you. Let's take a look at the crises we are facing. We have a situation where the world has changed. Everything has turned upside down. People are struggling. People are complaining. People are being infected and affected. People have lost their jobs. People don't know where they're going to get the next morsel of food from in some cases. And so much more. Allah says, you know what? If all of that brought you closer to me, it was better for you. If all of that brought you closer to me, it was better for you. And sometimes we have made you lose a job because we know that if you open your own business, you will make much more money than the salary you were getting. So we made sure you lost that job. We did you a favor, but you cried for a while. The minute you got up and realized the favor of Allah, that's the very minute you began to achieve and receive the comfort. Sometimes you lose in terms of marriage, perhaps a divorce, perhaps you lost your spouse. Do you know that maybe the Almighty wants to give you someone 10 times better? And that's why the Almighty made you go through something you thought was so bad for you. Allah says, no, you don't know, we know. When you leave it to us and you just did your best and continue to do your best, we will make sure that you have actually achieved the comfort in the long run. So my brothers and sisters, learn to surrender to the will of Allah. Have you tried your best? Yes, you did. Then don't worry. The rest is going to come. Have faith, have conviction, build that faith and conviction. 
if Allah wanted you somewhere, there's nowhere else you're going to be. And if Allah did not want you somewhere, you're never ever going to be there. Remember that. So this is conviction and faith in the Almighty. We need to build it. We have become weak in faith. And this is why to build that faith, the Almighty makes us helpless at times. So helpless because he just wants you to turn to him. The minute you turn to him, you will achieve the comfort that he really wanted you to achieve. What greater comfort that can there be than that which is provided from the Almighty himself? So Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Allah knows, you don't know. People lost their jobs. Like I said, people went through divorce. People have had great loss. Sometimes they big business deals went sour. Something you were really looking forward to went wrong. You had planned and you had actually thought that you were going to make a lot of money and you didn't. You know, sometimes your health fails you. You go through a scare such that you almost died. And Allah says, no, you know what? It was better for you. You came to us. You became a better person. Sometimes we have an attitude that actually stinks. Sometimes we have pride and arrogance, haughtiness to chop that and cut that. The Almighty does things to us. But if we don't chop and cut, even after the Almighty has tested us and given us the opportunities, then we have none other to blame than ourselves. Even the Almighty will say, I tried to give you the sign, but you didn't want it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, develop your character, your conduct, humble yourself, be a better person. Watch how you speak to others, especially those who work with you and for you, those with whom you are earning. Make sure you look after them. These are good people. Make sure you've cared for them. Imagine your staff at your business or your colleagues or whoever else is there. They are struggling and you're busy enjoying your life. You will never earn goodness through that. Look after everyone. Allah will look after you. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too. So please consider sharing. And we will bring more videos in the future. Inshallah. So consider subscribing. And you won't miss any. Jazakallah khairan.